Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the CRM segment uh, where I'm super excited to be interviewing both with Shri and Dr. Akila. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. I know it's late there, but this is fantastic. Thank you for being here. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Pleasure is ours. Uh, we are happy to be here. Thanks to share. I mean, uh, thanks for giving this opportunity to share about practice and how we are trying to uh, solve the problem for hospitals and health systems in this segment. Yeah. Well, to give the audience a little bit more perspective, you know, we're here to talk about Practice AI. Now, how did we find Practice AI? We looked at well over 160 companies within what we call the CRM category, are generally patient engagement. And uh, one of the things that we're really impressed by with Practice AI was your uh, variety of tools for care navigation. Uh, it's really unique. Uh, the, the features that you're building on top of the ecosystem you're building is awesome. So. I'm, I'm super excited to be highlighting those product features today. Uh, before we jump into questions around the product and company, let's start off with the visual so the audience has a good idea of Practice AI. Yeah? Certainly. Uh, we'll share the screen. Great. So we'll, we'll start off with a brief uh, about Practice, what we do at Practice, and then we'll uh, be happy to take more questions on that. Uh, practice stands for AI powered care navigation. We try to use artificial intelligence to understand the patient's medical concern, why they are seeking medical care, and navigate them to the right next step so that the whole outcome can be uh, improvised with a, with a guided navigation throughout the journey from problem to cure. And while doing this, we also ensure the cost that hospitals and health systems and providers spent to provide this care navigation is lower. And the most important uh, out outcome is not just the medical outcome, also a great patient experience. So in the last couple of years, we have measured our patient experience to be far above 92% in most of the situations. That's because we're able to navigate the patients precisely to the care step so that the uh, outcome is improvised. Uh, as far as the the platform is concerned. So the platform is available as a digital front door for all the patients that are trying to interact with any health system over their hospital landlines, or the phone call, or the hospital websites, patient portals, and all other digital mediums that they usually use. Coming to the problem that we are trying to solve, uh, it's essentially the complexity in the care navigation. As you know, uh, healthcare is one of the most notoriously complex services out there. When a patient is not well, uh, from the point of problem to the cure, there are a ton of decisions that they need to make, and they need a lot of guidance in this process. But the sad part is uh, the uh, workforce, the medical workforce that, the, that they are trying to guide the patients to have not got much uh, sufficient medical knowledge, uh, to, to navigate the patients at each of these steps. And that's what we're trying to solve through AI, right? Probably I would give a much better uh, uh, perspective or a context through my personal experience, which was a crucial uh, reason why we started off this whole journey. Uh, a few years ago, so I was trying to make an appointment for one of my family members and the uh, primary care provider or the primary doctor of my family member suggested that we should meet a specialist. And as you know, each PCP has a set of great specialists that they usually refer them to. And the doctor gave me uh, the contact details, the doctor's name and details, and, and then I came back home, right? And as, as a techie, as a, a technology person, I am used to doing all these transactions online, let it be uh, buying uh, anything online, to booking a service, even, it is a, even if it is a home professional service, I usually do online booking. So I thought, let me just go home uh, and uh, let me search for the doctor or the specialist and, uh, and, and found the doctor's website. And the unfortunate part is the doctor's website does not give me a real-time booking uh, appointment service, where the only way I can make an appointment is to call up the provider. So I took the number, I called up the provider, I had to wait for at least three to four minutes before I was sent a voicemail. So I left a voicemail and I believed uh, they'll give me a call back and then make the appointment on a convenient date. Yes, they, uh, after a few hours, I received a call, but I was in the middle of a meeting, so 
they left a voicemail. So after this back and forth of a few phone calls, uh, I finally booked an appointment. So this is this is the journey that most of us usually go through. And uh, the next part of the story is when when the date of the visit was approaching, I received a call from the specialist office saying that. Uh, the specialist wasn't going to be available on that day and they were really sorry about that. They had to reschedule all the patient appointments on that day. Uh, and again, we had uh, back and forth a lot of calls because I was driving at that point of time. I could not access my calendar. So this again happened and I finally found a date. I ended up at the specialist office and when I went there, I was handed over a clipboard with 10 pages of paper on it where I had to fill all the details of the family member their past medical history, uh, all the consent forms and everything. And the, uh, and the interesting thing is I've done this 150 times in the past at various places. And after this, we had a consultation. Uh, the doctor was really good. Uh, after the consultation was done, I was <coughs> referred to a lab book. Again, I went there, the same paperwork, the documentation, the same thing happened in pharmacy also. So this is the uh, challenging part of visiting a doctor and getting the care when I'm not there. And there's not one of a case in my, uh, in my, in my past uh, few years, nor this is uh, happening only for few patients, a few people across the globe. This is something that every single person faces in most of the cases in a, in, in a, uh, in a journey of uh, seeking care and getting uh, healthier. And that's what we're trying to solve through AI, where we believe uh, all this, uh, manual coordination, all this care navigation can be done autonomously without having to do so many calls and also can be done much more intelligently with clinical understanding of what uh, is the problem that patient is trying to visit from. Yeah, and from, uh, you know, the uh, Sri has given an example from the, you know, a patient's perspective. So when it comes to providers like myself, you know, when I was practicing as a doctor, as well as managing the outpatients department, uh, you know, it was it was very imperative for us that, you know, if, if we had a technology uh, which could, you know, assist us in making uh, the care journey a lot more personalized for a patient, let's say, for instance, if I have the you know complete care knowledge about a patient who's gonna meet me at a specific uh, you know appointment date and i've already understood what the patient uh, you know has in terms of the you know uh, previous history or the sort of symptoms they are experiencing or the you know the family history as well as what are their preferences for a specific treatment did they you know undergo a specific sort of care plan and it wasn't as pleasant for them so if i get all of these you know um, understanding or the overall um, uh, you know data about a patient even before the consultation then the uh, you know the overall uh, the uh, time that i'm spending in the consult is a lot more efficient uh, for the, for me as well as for the patient and i'm spending a lot more time in actually delivering care than you know initial probing or maybe documentation and things like that so if uh, you know providers are given such technology it's, it's um, you know going to really uh, increase the outcomes for the the, you know overall healthcare so that's when we started practice and um, uh, you know not only from the patient's perspective but also from the provider and the payer uh, point of view this is uh, quite uh, you know the digital front door is sort of the technology that um, can solve a lot of uh, you know complexities that are currently there in our uh, you know healthcare system awesome i i i uh... I like this, uh, the visual here that you provided, Shri. I think it really gives a good uh, uh, idea of the, your backstory about how you <laughs> navigated to actually set up a meeting. And, and um, it's also interesting to hear your backstory as well, Dr. Akila, on how on both sides of the equation, it's actually a headache um, to, to actually get a, 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 a consultation with the patient and how complicated that can be sometimes. So I, I appreciate you guys show the, the, uh, the backstory as well about why you guys created um, Practice AI. I, I, I want to jump in now to some of the unique, uh, what I thought were some of the unique characteristics of, of Practice AI. And you highlighted it here very, very well. You are helping individuals navigate care and you're using AI as a tool to do that. 
I'm curious, uh, you know, what does this actually look like for patients? And why is care, I mean, you already kind of highlighted it, but why is care navigation an issue? And like, what, what was originally before all of this? And, you know, what are the main pain points that patients run into? And I know that's a lot of questions at once, but I'm just trying to, uh, without your platform, compare to some of the issues before and, and, and Tree you already gave a great example of that, but just to really highlight this, what does this look like to uh, to patients? Sure. So without the practice AI platform uh, uh, here, what a patient has to undergo is a series of steps where they usually take the phone number from the website, they call up the hospital, do all this, make all these appointments, and also try to understand about their insurance coverage because uh, usually the insurance card does not give much information about which specialist covers and how much is the deductible amount, how much is the copay amount, uh, what would be the potential expense of this treatment when they uh, undergo a, a treatment or let's say a, a, a consultation. So that's where the first journey is, uh, where the patients use uh, some of these uh, let's say mediums. It can be a hospital website, it can be a hotline number, it can be a patient portal, it can be a mobile app, or some of the patients also directly walk into the uh, community care centers or uh, clinics. And through one of these mediums, they usually start that first interaction. And because that first interaction is usually with the human beings, there's an amount of lead time involved. And there's also a lot of uh, to and fro uh, steps involved. And the sad part is, uh, the, the person who's trying to help the patients are not really doctors all the time. So they do not have the medical context. When a, when a patient is coming for a stomach pain, uh, it can be a gynecological problem, a gastroenterological problem, a nephro problem. In case of, let's say, a gynec problem, if it's an UTI, the patient may need to go for an urgent care, not really a, uh, a specialist appointment. Or uh, they don't need to even go to an emergency room because the wait times are much more. They don't need to really wait in, in an ER room. So uh, understanding this nuances and ensuring that first touch point understands the patient's medical needs precisely is what we do differently. For example, when a patient comes over and then uh, searches for a specialist, uh, let's say an orthopedic, uh, there, might be a twin, uh, uh, there might be 20 orthopedics in serial sinus. And which orthopedic a patient needs to go to is what they usually do research based on the bio and the information that's given on the website. Right? Uh, and and uh, oftentimes, patients are not really well equipped to, uh, to understand who's the right, uh, right orthopedic. For example, a patient has uh, gone, gone through a sports injury and they want to get the uh, treatment done from an orthopedic who has been well-versed with sports injury treatments. So they do not really understand from the, uh, the, from the just bio which is there on the website on who of those orthopedics is the perfect doctor for their sports injury. So that's what we bring as a medical uh, intelligence and the operation intelligence because our AI has an ability to uh, integrate with hospital scheduling system, hospitals, uh, EMR, or EHR to understand this provider dynamics, insurance dynamics, and availability dynamics. It precisely navigates the patients to the right provider and also the right care step. And the very first thing that's involved is a medical triaging algorithm. So we built a medical triaging algorithm that when a patient speaks in a very, very natural way, like my tummy hurts, it can understand by a set of few questions, by probing to precisely pinpoint what could be the problem the patient is coming from. If the patient already has a PCP referral, it also allows patients to upload their referral letter from which it can understand why is patient coming for a uh, gastroenterologist or gynecologist. So based on this, it does a match of the provider and does the scheduling matching and does the whole a transaction autonomously without having to involve any human beings. So this is what uh, it brings as a unique uh, element. And the most important thing is being available on all the digital mediums, let it be a patient portal or the hospital website or the phone line is, is very important for a digital finger technology. And uh, I mean, we are, we are happy to say that since the beginning we focused on all these core mediums uh, to address the patient's concerns. Wow. I really like the, uh, the the different visuals that you guys provide here. I think that really gives gives us a great context of um, how you're navigating care. I, I'm curious though, because this is a this seems like a challenging problem for this entire category and care navigation as a whole. Care can be broad, 
you know, uh, people have lots of different issues and there's also lots of different types of specialties and services and issues. And so how do you, I mean, how do you even help navigate care across so many different hospital services? How do you understand the complexity of different care needs? Uh, how, how did you build this? So, uh, yeah, that, that's a very, very important, interesting question, Kyle. So uh, as a, when we look at the healthcare as a whole, uh, we will be overwhelmed by the, uh, as Rekha said, the uh, depth and uh, breadth of uh, the specialties, the problems, the needs of the patients. So we, we categorized all these needs into various buckets in terms of what are the core challenges a patient wants to get addressed before the consultation or during the consultation. So we, we try to categorize them into, let's say, the uh, specialist match, provider match, insurance navigation, referral navigation. So that way we categorized all these problems into a set of uh, very, very essential elements to solve first. As a startup, we had to focus on these uh, pre-consultation areas, though as, as an AI, we want to uh, help the patient across the journey. We focused on the pre-consult uh, needs uh, before they end up in the consultation room. And that's where uh, the whole journey starts. When, when a patient starts deciding for care and when they discover the, uh, the, the uh, pro provider and how do we make sure the patient ends up at the right time, at the right care point is, is what we addressed. And when it comes to specialties, uh, as, uh, I mean, we, we were fortunate to work with some of the largest health systems in the last couple of years. When we work with a large health system as a digital front door, the need is to understand the problems of a variety of patients, uh, can't really uh, focus on one, one area or two areas. When, when, it, when uh, a hospital who's serving, let's say, 6 million patients, 7 million patients, patients per year, we had to serve all kinds of patients. So that's why, though initially we had focused on a few specialities to strengthen the algorithm and the operational AI, but we uh, solved for all sorts of specialties and we built an AI algorithm which is able to uh, get data from these large health systems and train on itself to uh, to to deliver to uh, various set of specialities. So, do you want to add something to it, uh, Dr. Phil? Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, what we are currently handling is majorly in the pre-consultation or sort of the phase when a patient is deciding for care. So also extending this to the during consultation phase where we are providing the, uh, you know, providing the patient summary or the overall, uh, you know, data that we, um, our AI, uh, you know, analyzes during the conversation with a patient on the website or on a, you know, um, patient portal or on an app or maybe even in the call center. So the, our AI makes a complete, you know, case summary of the patient and uh, um, on the back end provides this to the, as a, you know, easy plugin over the uh, scheduling or the EMR systems for the hospitals, which helps the hospital staff as well to save a lot of time for their, uh, you know, patient intake or the uh, registration related, um, you know, things or the consent forms and things like that. So that's, uh, you know, the sort of uh, areas that we have currently handled in the pre and the during consultation uh, phases. Yeah, and I, I feel as though this, 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 this is a, a pretty complex problem, but it's, it's unique uh, in your approach and making sure that at least you can really help filter down and, and, and push patients in the right direction and then almost automate that entire process. So it's, it's, it's it's really great, and again, I, I like that you guys are showing a lot of visuals here. This is fantastic, um, and this is actually goes kind of back to Dr. Akila, and it bases on your example earlier. You've kind of already maybe highlighted it. Um, Shree, feel free to answer, but I'm just curious. You know, why is care navigation important to payers and providers? Uh, you know, how do they actually benefit? Like, why is this really important to them to solve this problem? Sure. So, um, uh, true, uh, you know, from both the sides, it is, uh, a, a, you know, problem both for the providers, even, uh, you know, for the payers as well. So, uh, from the provider's point of view, there are, um, uh, you know, the, the hospitals are spending over, uh, you know, well over uh, billions of dollars on the operational workforce salaries. So, which is increasing year on year. So, uh, you know, most of this workforce that I'm talking about, 
is all uh, you know the non medical or uh, sort of care coordination workforce so which could be um, you know the um, which could be the um, uh, you know the receptionists it could be the chat agents the call agents the um, uh, physician extenders or the uh, you know um, care coordinators or the doctor secretaries in different departments of the hospital so um, uh, despite spending so much of uh, you know um, um, uh, the money on the you know operational um, uh, you know uh, solving the operational challenges um, despite that the overall you know the number of patients who are getting navigated end to end or who are actually taking uh, some care services in the hospital is, is less than 20% of the uh, you know overall um, uh, website traffic or the digitally uh, you know the sort of people who are exploring different care options so um, with this there's a lot of revenue leakage for the health system so um, to plug in this revenue is one of the uh, you know key factors that uh, most health systems look for uh, you know digitally advanced solutions to um, allow for better patient access and better patient experience and um, of all the industries you know when we talk about uh, healthcare is something where they where you know the productivity is actually quite low so as uh, you know as compared to the amount of uh, you know people who are uh, you know helping the patients navigate through care or get the patients at the right time to the right you know care options as simple as it looks like but there is lot of you know operational um, uh, you know issues that the care providers are uh, you know uh, looking at when they uh, you know navigate a patient so that's when the productivity um, when we see as compared to any other industry it's way, way, way low in the healthcare uh, you know area or healthcare services area so which is why it is of um, you know uh, very uh, uh, it's a very uh, you know important factor for the providers to uh, where they are uh, you know concentrating on improving the efficiency as well as the uh, you know care delivery the the other perspective i also want to add uh, kyle is that uh, when it comes to uh, the number of patients the provider treats that's uh, on a decline because of the operational uh, aspects of uh, a, a consultation right so doctors are spending far more amount of time in the documentation because of the uh, insurance reimbursements and more increased emphasis on the value based care and this leaves doctors lesser amount of time to really focus on the consultation and also uh, it sometimes leaves them to treat fewer number of patients and that's one more reason why we've been able to strongly uh, uh, kind of uh, sh show this and prove the value to the providers that yes with the solution it frees up a lot of the time because most of the information that is pre-filled they can just copy and paste it in the EHR or also in uh, many a times it gets pushed into the EHR thereby making it easier for them to uh, complete a consultation and they're, they're also uh, taking more number of consultations that increase in revenue uh, while we ensure a great patient experience is one of the uh, important reasons why providers are really, really happy with the solution. And also, uh, circling back to the first uh, kind of situation, the personal situation I spoke about, uh, patient experience is the lowest in the healthcare industry compared to any industry. The NPS scores, if you measure, healthcare always uh, ranks at the bottom of the uh, table, right? And 81% and, uh, of the patients are dissatisfied with their care experience. That's not because they are having a bad consultation with the doctor or the provider is not great, but its majority are predominantly about the processes before the consultation, before they come to the doctor's office, and the process in the doctor's office before the consultation are, are how they reach out back to the providers post the consultation. So that's what makes uh, more than 80% of the patients dissatisfied about their care experience and if we solve that the whole uh, healthcare ecosystem becomes better with, with better outcomes and that's what we are kind of uh, have, have finding as a very very uh, kind of uh, great value proposition for the providers in case. yeah it, it definitely makes sense i mean it's it is i mean you highlighted this specific problem in the very beginning about what that process actually looks like for most people um, and why that would be really beneficial on both sides of the equation. Uh, you know, uh, kind of coming, coming back to the, the product itself, one of the reasons why we thought Practice AI was one of the best companies 
in the CRM category as a whole and why we're super excited about the things that you're doing is because you guys are building a number of features just beyond patient triage. You know, uh, you are doing this onboarding, you're managing requests, you're scheduling care, you order ancillary services, there's, you know, there's telemedicine component and all this, you can check, et cetera. So I'm just curious that maybe you might want to highlight some of these features and, and is your goal to really just manage the entire care process out of all of this? Sure. I'll just use a different slide for this. Uh, probably, yeah, there's, there's a perfect slide to explain this. Uh, absolutely, Kyle, it's, it's a very, very important question. So when, when one looks at the whole set of features that we have to, of, we are offering to these hospitals and health systems and providers, it looks like a, a lot of features, right? A lot of uh, different products. But uh, to, be, to be precise, it's, it's one single product which has a connecting thread of a patient medical need. So uh, when we look at the whole journey, we look at it as a single thread of one patient coming to a hospital or a doctor for a specific problem, seeking uh, care to become healthier again. That patient thread needs to be connected to each and every process. And what we are doing is there are already processes built in. We are not really reinventing or recreating the processes. However, we are just trying to ensure we plug that information that we collect from the patient in a conversational format into those various processes so that they'll become more efficient and the whole the whole journey becomes much more seamless so when you look at this uh, the care navigation journey in the in, uh, on the slide the digital front door is is the initial or the starting point where the patient says i'm visiting this problem for this uh, the doctor for this problem or i need care for this problem so that's where the first medical understanding is and we use that to really understand if a patient is undergoing an elective surgery uh, whether, whether their insurance is eligible to cover the service, service or not, how much copay they, they, need, they need to pay, who's the right provider, do they have a referral, is it valid, and uh, let's say uh, giving the consent form and ensuring we get the registration process uh, done before a patient comes to the consultation room. So all of that is uh, just a connecting dot, just connecting the dots in these processes and filling in the information which is missing in these processes. So thereby we're not really creating any uh, change in the operational process are not really creating any panel process, rather we are uh, enabling the process to be much more clinically aware, much more intelligent, uh, based on the medical knowledge that we bring in, and also pass that information back to the uh, EHRs, so that the whole e-prescription or uh, the, uh, the doctor's, uh, let's say, uh, care delivery becomes much more aware of the patient's medical context. Right? And we also want to use this once the patient leaves the consultation room to the post consult. So this is there's a uh, single thread of the patient by connecting the various pieces, and it's not really a discrete set of uh, various purchases that we have built. Really interesting. Yeah, I think this is a great visual for talking about how the, the, the roadmap is going to really encompass that, that whole process. And it looks like you guys do intend to expand into outpatient care and follow up. Uh, is that is that the future? Seems like it is here. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, uh, as a startup, we we've been focusing on the pre consult uh, and uh, medical case summarization so far. Uh, but with with more and more resources to kind of uh, at, at our dispense, we would be uh, working on the post consult space. Again, in the post consult space, the uh, the uh, good thing is we can concentrate by certain specialities, right? Let's say the chronic care, diabetes care, or I think the uh, cardiology. So uh, why don't you take that a little bit, probably into deeper, I think I'm not the perfect person to explain that. Yeah, so in the post-consultation phase, you know, as in when we'll be, uh, you know, starting with the post-consultation navigation, there are several, uh, you know, chronic care areas that we'll be um, specifically targeting like the diabetic or the, uh, you know, cardiology or even the, uh, you know, obesity or such, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, treatment related or surgery related focus areas, let's say orthopedic surgeries, etc. So this is again going to be a lot more digital driven uh, in the sense that you know analyzing post the discharge what sort of uh, you know symptoms that a patient is experiencing is it um, you know not actually a complication of the you know surgery or of the treatment that the doctor has uh, provided 
so monitoring the patient uh, you know digitally as well as um, you know making sure that the um, post treatment appointments are uh, on time and uh, you know reducing the care gaps in the you know overall process is something that we'll be you know concentrating at a later point in time but as of now as she has mentioned we we'll, we are you know majorly focusing on the digital front door as well as the pre consult navigation and the uh, you know patient intake journey interesting that's awesome uh you uh, you'll take over this entire care management i mean it's um, it's pretty unique i, I i'm curious and you, I, we, we kind of highlighted it a little bit earlier, and it, it, it might seem obvious, but I just want to highlight it again. What are some of the features that, uh, that not only your patients like to use the most, but also uh, maybe even providers? What are, what are some of the features that you might be able to highlight for us that uh, they're most excited about? So as a provider, the, the most uh, ex uh, exciting uh, value proposition for them is the context of the patient. Right. So when a patient uh, steps into the consultation room, uh, the ability to uh, understand at a glance in 10 seconds about uh, who's the patient, what are the symptoms that they're observing, the past medical history, the history of presenting illness, uh, what are the associated symptoms of it. So having a glance of this uh, in one go uh, in 10 seconds is, is one of the most interesting value propositions for a provider. And apart from this, they're also excited about how a patient is prepared about the care plan even before they come to the consultation. Uh, for example, uh, there was, uh, there was uh, a, a pilot which was run by one of the uh, large health systems, I think it's Baycare or uh, Geisinger, where they're trying to educate patients about the care plan when they come to the emergency room, right? That sets the expectation so well that patients would be aware of what they're undergoing in the next couple of hours or three hours, right? In the same way, through our uh, AI uh, conversation, we also uh, make patients understand about this care plan so that they'll be well aware of why they're going for, uh, let's say, two or three different subsequent visits, what kind of uh, lab tests they're undergoing, and what information does that give to the doctor. So we are preparing the patient with this care plan. That really uh, was very, very fascinating for some of the providers because uh, the patient is already, uh, un I mean, having the expectation of why they are undergoing some sort of step at some point of time. And, uh, you know, from the patient's point of view, some of the most used features are obviously, uh, you know, the feature that the patient can, you know, freely type or text anything that they, you know, are experiencing about their health. It could be, you know, uh, ranging from, uh, you know, my kid has diaper rashes to, uh, you know, I'm looking for, uh, you know, CABG uh, or laser hysterectomy sort of treatment, or maybe I'm looking for a doctor whose name is XYZ. So, uh, you know, the uh, ability for the patients that they could, you know, type in whatever they want in whichever natural format they want. Uh, and our AI system, uh, you know, the, the sort of triage that our uh, system does, which is way less as compared to any, uh, you know, system out there. So in just a few, like four to uh, five questions, it is able to navigate the patients and pinpoint the exact, you know, care provider that they, or the care step that they have to, uh, you know, next take. So the, this, uh, you know, these two sort of features are one of the most, um, you know, used or most where we have found a lot of patient engagement is what, um, you know, is from the patient's point of view. So to, to extend on that, Kyle, uh, in fact, natural language processing is one of the strongest forte that we have. We can even confidently uh, say on record that some of the uh, NLP uh, training that we have done is, is more superior than most of the symptom checkers out there. Uh, in fact, the way it understands a layman's problem, uh, as, as Dr. Claire told, like it is having diaper rashes or let's say, uh, my I'm losing my hair, uh, my uh, I'm having, I'm not able to see properly. So these are the common ways in which a patient says, but most of the symptom checkers usually work in the methodology of keyword mapping. So they identify a keyword and they try to link that keyword to a speciality or a condition, right? Whereas our NLP is very, very strong in terms of understanding the most layman way of saying things. That makes a patient believe or feel like they're interacting with a human being than an automated assistant that makes them uh, converge more and complete the uh, conversational flow. So in fact, uh, to give you some of the stats, 
the uh, completion rate of our triaging algorithm so far has been about 93 percent right uh, that's uh, that's also because we understand the, uh, the problem very clearly and ask fewer number of questions than asking a set of 30 40 questions to understand and diagnose saying you have penicillin you have uh, nasal polyps you have uh, allergic genetics uh, rather than giving a diagnosis we give, we understand uh, based on these questions and uh, ensure patient is navigated to the right care wow yeah i think this is what what is the most interesting about your solution is that you do give a combination of a couple things you give patients flexibility to be able to express themselves like a regular human being uh, but also give them enough confidence in how to navigate the process that they feel like they're in control and they can trust the process and they understand, you know, who are the right people to talk to. And, and, and at the same time for providers, you give them control and understanding everything that, uh, what a patient is trying to communicate, but in a, in a process that uh, works within their workflow. So I think it's really, really interesting that how you guys approach this. I think it's really great. Um, one of the challenges, though, that it seems for most healthcare companies is trying to work with providers and being able to sell the providers and integrating with the HR systems and being able to uh, uh, to manage that whole process. I mean, healthcare is known to have longer sales cycles, and it's it's um, uh, EHR companies are really difficult to work with or integrate with or don't like to share data, etc. So, how did you guys manage this? these issues of, you know, you know, in, well, first off, let's start with implementation. How did you guys implement, how do you even implement this in a hospital system? Then we'll jump into, you know, how do you deal with providers and EHR tools? Sure, sure. Absolutely, we, we love these challenges. And in fact, the reason why we love these challenges is that it creates a barrier to entry. Not everyone really can come and build a, a digital health company, which uh, provides a tangible value and still uh, navigate through all these challenges, right? And, and uh, the, the one reason why, in fact, we got a great context of this is, is because of the presence of Dr. Akila, uh, who has uh, an immense experience in the medical in industry, right? So she has that insider knowledge, and which, uh, coupled with my data science background, helped us uh, first uh, kind of break this whole big challenge into chunks right and and when it comes to implementation as you rightly said this is one of the biggest uh, challenges any startup has to navigate before they really show that tangible uh, value to the health system and uh, we, we we kind of uh, since in the last two, two, two to three years because we work with uh, 10 large health systems we pretty much worked on uh, eight different ehr and emr systems and we integrated with uh, also various sorts of scheduling, uh, all these uh, provider uh, databases, so which which uh, helped us solve these challenges one at a time. And we are working with a new health system, and thereby we built uh, a core competence of being able to integrate with any new system at a, a quick span of time, right? Uh, and and usually the way we approach any of these problems is we first. Uh, break it down into the uh, modules. The first one we usually look at is the scheduling system and the provider database, right? All it needs for a patient conversation to start is an AI which first understands medical knowledge, which is already inbuilt into our platform. And the second thing is the uh, awareness or the understanding of the hospital, how many providers are there, which specialties are there, which locations are available, for which we don't need to really get into any of the integrations. We can just do that from their website and all their uh, existing resources, digital resources. That's the second phase. And the third phase is, is the scheduling. So that's where we start uh, in, uh, integrating with the practice management softwares or the uh, scheduling module of the EHR, and which is not really a big challenge because there are uh, pretty much five to 600 applications which have been doing it in, uh, I mean, uh, over the last few years. And the, then the next uh, integration step which comes is the clinical integration. So that's where it takes a little bit of uh, time because of the, uh, let's say, strong security protocols and the, uh, and the need for ensuring all the stakeholders are aligned. So that's where it takes time. So we, we usually chart out these uh, four phases and go in a uh, phase where approach to be able to integrate that. And uh, though it looks like a very, very mammoth challenge to solve, uh, in some cases, uh, we 
we kind of done the end to end integration in less than two weeks. That's because we have categorized the whole uh, type of health systems into few uh, uh, modules where, let's say, a large health system with uh, satellite clinics and uh, working in, let's say, uh, epic kind of uh, NMR has this clinical pathway. And similarly, a second set of categories. So because of that categorization, we've been able to build modules and elements that uh, that, that are helping us easily integrate. Awesome. I mean, a thousand beds in two weeks. I mean, it's, that's awesome. That, that's one of our fastest and uh, I mean, because all the stakeholders are already aligned on that. That's great. By the way, how much time, can we go a little bit over time that we've scheduled or do you guys have a hard stop in a few minutes? No, perfectly fine. We can go a little uh, beyond as well. Okay, great. Well, to follow up, I mean, you, you, you may have already, um, I mean, you definitely answered the question, the follow-up question that I had of how do you, how do you integrate with EHRs? And it's really, it's either if they provide an integration or an API that uh, allows you to integrate, great. If you don't, you build your tool around it, which is awesome. I mean, it's, it makes, I think, uh, gives a lot of your, your customers a lot of flexibility. Uh, but how do you, I mean, and I, I, I don't think there is a magical answer for this, but I'm just curious if healthcare, I mean, working with providers is difficult. It's really hard to get their attention. Um, I mean, how do you manage those long sales cycles with providers? Yeah. So um, uh, with the providers, uh, you know, the value that we are, uh, you know, generating in terms of the um, the dual appointments or the workflow automation that we are providing this value proposition itself is a you know quite um, uh, you know um, a ready piece for them so they they wanted to actually uh, you know solve this problem as uh, um, you know as um, quickly as possible and with the easy deployments as well as with the you know ready suite of offerings that we have it's a lot more easier for the hospitals to onboard uh, practice AI technology and what we we have seen that unlike you know the industry average of about 18 to 24 months of sales cycles with these uh, you know enterprise clients some of these uh, you know our uh, current clients we have uh, cracked these deals uh, you know from uh, the initial interactions to actually launching the product within six to eight uh, months of time frame so this uh, you know actually explains uh, you know the the sort of uh, value that our product uh, you know provides for these uh, hospitals both the patients as well as the care coordination staff the providers and you know everyone to, to add on to that, uh, the reason the reason why we're able to shorten the sales cycle from 15 to 18 months to 6 to 8 months is also because of uh, hitting the nerve for uh, various stakeholders uh, at the right spot, right? So uh, when it comes to uh, the digital experience or the patient experience, the uh, marketing heads or the revenue officers are quite aligned. And when it comes to solving the operational problems and reducing the wait times and uh, increase in the quality of outcomes, the operational heads are quite aligned, right? In the, in the same way, the medical teams are quite aligned because we are providing a much more uh, rich information when a patient enters the consultation room. So because various stakeholders have their KPIs met because of uh, the, the better value proposition through our AI, we've been able to onboard them quite faster or uh, convince the whole uh, the uh, set of stakeholders faster than uh, a, a solution which is only offering one or two value propositions. Awesome. I mean, it's it's uh, impressive, and it makes sense, you know, um, uh, why uh, you know providers would want to jump at this opportunity sooner rather than later. Um, really impressive. I, you guys are an international company. You have big hospital systems in different markets, in different regions of the world. I mean, how did you guys manage to to scale like this, especially as a, a you know still relatively early company? It's it's one thing to work with providers. It's one thing to work with providers at an international scale. Can you give us any insight on how you guys have been able to grow, how you've been able to grow so far? Sure. Uh, I would say that's the, uh, the kind of challenges that we've faced uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, which has helped us really do that. And, and, uh, and especially which, which got accelerated by COVID. Now, now there are no physical boundaries. Uh, it, it, it's all the digital world, right? 
So as long as <clears throat> a technology or uh, a product understands the nuances of what happens in a healthcare market, what is the patient care journey from problem to cure, and, and being able to uh, tailor our uh, technology to those, uh, to those uh, operational uh, challenges uh, is, is what really helping us serve the uh, specific set of customers. And, and when we started off, it's, it's uh, <clears throat> only in Singapore, where we work with the largest health system of Singapore, which is in fact one of the largest in Asia Pacific sectors. And the challenges of that public health system is quite different from a large private health system who's a second customer who has almost 300 locations around uh, uh, 20, 30 uh, large hospitals and few mid-sized hospitals and various clinics. So when we work with that private health system, the problems were quite different. And when we work with the third health system, which is uh, a, a primary and a secondary care setup, which has over 200, uh, uh, let's say, locations, these challenges were quite different. So each challenge in the, in the beginning of our uh, startup journey really helped us build a product uh, that, that complex. It, it's, it's unique how you have that flexibility to work with, you know, large providers, in this case, government ecosystems, you know, both a uh, combination of clinics versus massive hospitals. So it's, it's, it's interesting that you, you guys have been able to, uh, to do that. Can you, uh, it just for the audience sake, uh, just to kind of put perspective on a care navigation problem, can you give us an idea of really what is, how big is this problem? Like when we talk about, I guess the term for his market says, really how big is care navigation in, in your eyes? And, and, and what is that, how big is this problem that your platform is solving? So uh, when it comes to uh, care navigation, or patient navigation, uh, Kyle, we believe that it's an intersection of various uh, segments which have been in existence. And uh, care navigation through AI is a new way of doing it than a completely new market, right? Uh, when it comes to the existing segments like patient engagement, which has been in existence through text and SMSs and all these uh, digital tools and provider, uh, provider search uh, tools in the hospital websites like Kairos, like Algolia, uh, so there has been a huge patient engagement market, right? And the way they've been doing it is traditional. It's, it's much more, uh, let's say, uh, conventional than using the artificial intelligence. And there is a healthcare CRM market, which is again humongous, uh, with, with great players like Salesforce, Health Cloud, which enables uh, hospitals to understand uh, the patient uh, a little better. And there is contact center outsourcing where hospitals really can't handle a 24 seven call center to answer the patient's queries and make the appointments and help them understand the operational things before they come to the consultation. And there's also the healthcare chatbot, which recently came up uh, in the last couple of years. So when we look at the uh, intersection, which also includes telehealth, it's a massive market of $35 billion total at this world market. And uh, which only got accelerated because of the COVID. Uh, due to the COVID situation, all the hospitals are now much more aware that they need to use digital tools uh, than really having uh, human beings on the ground to navigate patients at each step in the journey. So that way, we uh, have uh, kind of understood the market is a humongous market where we can address a $3.5 billion uh, addressable market and obtainable market, of which we believe we'll, we can uh, easily gain a great market share with, with the product differentiation that we have there so far. Kind of going off of this, what does that actual business model look like? And what are the kind of the, the um, I'm assuming we talked about this earlier, you're working directly with providers. What is that, uh, what are some of the deliverables that, uh, that uh, you're pitching to customers? And I guess really what is the deliverables that really resonate with them? Um, yeah. Sure. So uh, when it comes to deliverables, uh, probably we can use the business model side to explain that a little bit. So uh, when it comes to deliverables, the, the first set of, uh, KPIs or the metrics that the hospitals are interested in, in is the number of uh, appointments or let's say uh, consultations that we book autonomously without having to involve any human beings is, is, is one of the important things. So we call it the navigation rate. So we book, uh, uh, I mean, some appointments for one of the large health systems, we book close to 11,000 appointments per month. And of them, none of them needs hand-holding or human inter intervention. So all of that is done uh, autonomously. 
So that is one of the important KPIs that we look at, which is a primary driver in ensuring uh, we plug the revenue leakage. So usually, as we have mentioned in the beginning, uh, there's a revenue leakage in terms of uh, a patient com completing the problem to cure journey. So because we reduce that revenue leakage uh, through autonomous appointment booking, it uh, directly affects the top line. And the second important thing is the patient experience. So we constantly measure this patient experience over every single day, every single week, and every single month. And uh, we've been consistently able to get a customer experience in an NPS above 91%. So that's something which clearly indicates patients are really loving to interact with it. And that's something which uh, hospitals are uh, kind of constantly happy about uh, how we enable a greater patient experience with it, right? So through these KPIs, uh, we, we are able to deliver uh, higher value and uh, able to convert some of these annual contracts into multi-year contracts with some of the health systems that we work with. Wow. Yeah. Nine, uh, one is your N NPS? That's right. Wow, incredible. It's a great score. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something which we always try, take uh, pride in, uh, Kel. Uh, that's because we've been constantly improvising as a, as a medical AI. Uh, we have a huge set of doctors who constantly monitor how the product is performing, how it's answering the patient's questions, how can we make sure it, it is better than yesterday? Right, that's something which uh, helped us uh, get there. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go off a little bit uh, from the questions that I had. And I, I have a, 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 a general question that might backstep a little bit earlier and kind of fits within this ecosystem. But when we see this rise of telemedicine services and health management tools and you know, different remote patient monitoring, the devices and all of this, this, um, this volume of companies that uh, come out. And, uh, you know, how, it seems like, uh, you know, why did you guys take this route uh, overall of managing patient care versus a specific disease and a specific, you know, a method of, you know, in this case, chronic care, you can see in your slides. Why did you start with what we call the digital front door? I know we're going back a little bit. I, you know, no I'm yeah. curious in, in this in this question overall. Uh, it, it's a very interesting question, Kyle. Uh, and and uh, the reason why we picked up is the uh, breadth and uh, size of the problem, right? So there are 35 billion consultations happening every single year around the globe, and in more than 80 percent of those cases, patients need guidance. And uh, they've been going to the lengths of uh, talking to 10 people, visiting various doctors, and doing research on Google to be able to get to the first right step. And getting to the first right step is ensuring, uh, I mean, 80% ensuring a great outcome. So we wanted to solve the problem, which is much more common across this uh, care navigation than a specific problem, which is a niche to one specific segment. And that's why we picked up this digital front door, which is much more uh, uh, ubiquitous than, than a, a, a specific speciality where let's say there are only diabetes patients who, uh, who need some sort of guidance in, in their post consultation care journey. And, and, and we've been able to uh, kind of uh, show that in the last few years, when we work with 10 uh, large health systems, we serve over 8 million patients. And all these, of these 8 million patients, 5.5 uh, million patients were navigated to the right care, which ensured a great outcome for them. And this is, this is a much more common problem than uh, a specific uh, segment. And that's, that's the reason why we picked it up. Yeah, I think, you know, this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to highlight you guys at this event, specifically your approach. Because we can get uh, lost in the allure of a lot of different uh, unique digital health services. And I think, you know, your approach is taking what already exists, an existing process, and just improving that. Really, the, the process, the providers exist, hospitals exist, you know, the same people are gonna do the same thing. Yeah. With this. It's, uh, uh, but giving them the tools and the power to make that process a little bit more seamless, um, as opposed to looking for alternatives. And I think that's, I think that's really, uh, really important. Um, and I think that's really what, what makes your company uh, 
uh, great uh, and putting a lot of control back in the hands of the providers as opposed to you know individuals looking for uh, different uh, different health services elsewhere that's right, and also saving saving people from the Google. <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, self-diagnosing and understanding that they'll go to a specific specialty or specific doctor, and and also becoming hypochondriac that they have probably a serious medical condition is is what uh, many of the many of us all uh, most of the time undergo. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm I'm curious. Uh, you you alluded it to it a little bit earlier, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm curious how the pandemic has really uh, affected uh, your, your company. So uh, I would say, you know, with the pandemic, there has been an increased need for, uh, you know, health systems and providers alike to, you know, engage with their patients at scale and to navigate them to the relevant care options as per their needs and, uh, you know, their preferences or as per the hospital dynamics. Sometimes, you know, several times they have their urgent care, uh, you know, setups as, um, you know, temporarily closed or sometimes they have their the, uh, you know, the um, uh, procedure, uh, you know, facilities actually open while the patients are not aware. So um, this is a, you know, a sort of a massive, uh, you know, digital transformation phase for the hospitals and the, uh, you know, um, intelligent automation has been the key, which is why the digital front door has been on the top of minds for most of the health, uh, you know, systems. And uh, even for the smaller practices as well. So, uh, you know, it's a uh, it's, um, mix over there. So with the, uh, you know, pandemic, we uh, see that the lot of healthcare systems are now adapting to digital, uh, you know, self-scheduling tools or providing tools for, um, you know, uh, patients to make sure that they understand that why it is important at this uh, point or in time to seek care and uh, that's where we see an uh, you know an organic increase in the number of clients uh, for practice uh, yeah uh, i would like to add my two cents to it uh, where in fact one of the other challenges post covid is that when a patient is having a medical condition should i get a teleconsult or should i visit the hospital in person right that's very very uh, challenging problem because one uh, not all the hospitals are operating in person facilities uh, at this point of time they are slowly opening it up but still they are being cautious because they, they might face the risk of shutting down later if, if they uh, face any uh, covid uh, infections the second point is understanding the medical need for example some some conditions can be very well treated over a teleconsult Whereas some uh, medical conditions need a physical examination or an in-person visit. So understanding that uh, need very clearly and navigating the patients to the right care point is also a very, very important step post-COVID. Hospitals have been trying to train their workforce, but still the training is limited to the office hours and also to the uh, extent of the availability of that workforce. And that's what we're also bringing in uh, in the, in the uh, post-COVID era. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things with the pandemic, especially for the healthcare industry, is really highlighted a lot of bottlenecks that existed in um, traditionally slow processes. And I'm, I'm happy that uh, in, in a lot of cases for some companies in this industry, it's been kind of a silver lining and a, and a, a way to highlight those bottlenecks in, in a big way. And so this is, a, it's definitely a great to see that this is a tool that can really benefit a lot of people that are kind of both providers and patients that are kind of stuck in a situation where everything can be locked down and there's a lot of unanswered questions and how things should operate. So this is really great. Um, I, I'm curious at an at at even higher level question, what, is, what do you think is the future of care navigation and, and uh, what do you see that most people don't? Sure. Uh, I would let, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. So I would say, you know, from the, I would uh, just highlight from the healthcare uh, CRM sort of perspective. So um, I'd see that, you know, healthcare CRM is more, uh, you know, moving towards a sort of clinically informed CRM. And, uh, you know, to provide the patients a better uh, or a connected healthcare experience. 
and um, you know with the consumerization in healthcare that we are seeing now we believe that um, you know the automated contextual messaging can actually encourage the appointment booking and the procedure rescheduling in a personalized way and uh, the health systems are looking as you know the health systems are looking to recover the uh, lost revenues from covid 19 so this is one of the key tools for the um, you know hospitals or the uh, clinics or provider practices for um, uh, you know automating the um, uh, conversations with their patients or providing a better care um, in this fashion awesome really great I, I, um, uh, you know, with that, that was really all the questions I had, guys. Thank, thank you so much for going over time a little bit. I know I kept you a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, before I make any closing remarks, did you guys have anything that you wanted to close on uh, or have any closing remarks, asks for the audience, uh, anything? We see as a trend is that uh, when it comes to the large health systems, they they have the uh, innovation departments or they have the technology teams which are trying to put their efforts into the digital front door and, and implement some part of it uh, some part of it to, for their patient convenience whereas when it comes to practices uh, there's far less number of solutions that are available in the market right and 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 that's where uh, we believe a great deal of focus uh, are, are a huge white gap that uh, white space that's present uh, in terms of enabling this care navigation even when it comes to individual practices or uh, one to two provider or two to four provider kind of organ organizations or practices and that's where also they, they, there's a scope and a need for digital health solutions to navigate patients uh, in and, uh, and, and out of these uh, uh, care setups and, and that's where we believe a huge uh, growth is going to be as well, apart from the large health systems that are present in the, uh, in the country. Well, Tri, Dr. Akila, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, again, for the audience, this is Practice AI, uh, fantastic company, one of the best within the CRM category. Definitely a company you should be paying attention to. Uh, we had some great visuals to explain a little bit more about your guys' product details and why that's important. I thank you guys very much for taking the time to uh, to explain this, so I, I really appreciate it. And so, thank you again. Thanks a lot, Kyle. It's, it's a pleasure to be part of this and we would love to interact more uh, with, with uh, people from the US healthcare industry.